All right, everybody, warm welcome. Please sit comfortably. Welcome to morning practice. Some of you this evening. Just be in a very open and receptive state. This human experience actually does not have any ground. Notice how when you move from one part of the room to the other part of the room, walk three steps, five steps. There's no residue. There's no residue left of you, those three, four steps behind. and now you're here so each time you move from one place to another there's no residue there each time you move from one thought to the other there's no residue there so perhaps a lot of our psychological suffering is trying to grasp on to some idea of there the ground here there is some solid me at the center of this but the reality is right in front of us all through the day all through the night there's no ground as i move from place to place physically emotionally mentally situationally there's nothing there to hold on to absolutely nothing of course i can try to hold on but there's nothing there and the non acceptance of this fundamental groundlessness that there's nothing there to hold on to this is the source this is the core of our predicament this is the core of our suffering the denial of it being at war with it trying to prove to ourselves and to others no there is a something here there is a central core here but your whole experience is showing again and again it's so dream like in your dream it seemed so real what you whatever you went through seemed so real there were sights there were sounds there were feelings there was a story but within seconds of waking up just evaporated like what there's nothing there so it's quite a shift it's quite a shift to go from imagining ourselves to be a fixed person to begin to open ourselves to the fundamental groundlessness that there's nothing here to hold on to you can try to hold on but you're not going to get anything it's going to dissolve right in your hands and as this shift is made a new dimension opens up new possibility opens up there's a new orientation that happens and there is a lot less resistance there's a lot less second guessing there's a lot less self blame and blaming of others so in today's practice we open ourselves to this groundlessness no place to stand no place to stand it's not like i'm taking away from you some that something that you have it's snatching the ground beneath your feet there never was a ground beneath your feet everything you imagine to be so certain so sure so reliable has proven itself 
not to be again and again and again. And you know that. And this recognition, which sometimes comes in a snap, is also known as Kensho or Satori in the Zen tradition. It's like a shift from imagining you're a fish to realizing you're the whole ecosystem, you're the whole ocean. And within that, the fish are swimming, the corals are dancing with the currents. There's jellyfish and octopus and plankton. You're no longer that caught up in your individual destiny as you were. Shogyun Trumpa Rinpoche said it beautifully. The bad news is that you're falling with nothing to hold on to. The good news is that there is no ground. And this can actually be very freeing. It can make you really bold, actually. Because if it is a dream, if it is without a foundation, then what are the limits? What are the limits? I was just listening to an interview yesterday of this man who, as a youngster, got lost in some national park. He was hiking and he got lost. And in those 16 hours, he came just to the edge of death. It was very cold. And he made a promise to himself that if I survive this, I will learn to make my body and mind really strong. I will hone my survival instincts. So he did survive it. He began a lifelong journey of uh, trying to investigate what really is the way to be at our optimal health and just being sharp in our ability to live this life. So he talked about how he discovered many things and he discovered that he has no limits. He began running and he ran a marathon and then he ran a double marathon, then he ran a triple marathon, then he ran a hundred miles. And then he ran 130 miles, then he ran 24 hours continuously. And he realized that, wow, there are no limits. I can just keep going and going and going. And he began doing what scientists felt was in impossible for the human body to do. And he says, right now I'm in a place that I don't think there are any limits. So when you realize that there is no ground, then you're not as easily deceived by your ideas of what can and can't happen. You can poke holes in them. And there's less fear of failure.
So a kind of boldness comes in. So inviting you to tune into these two things. One is the fundamental groundlessness. Realizing that whatever you think is your foundation, your security, is actually quite hollow. It's actually quite hollow. No guarantee. Come from nothing and you return to nothing. In between what we try to hold on to, Ajahn Chah would say, my ne, my ne, not sure, not sure, uncertain, uncertain, not a sure thing. And then within that, a kind of boldness comes. Within that, a kind of audacity comes. Within that, a kind of fearlessness comes. Within that, an unwillingness to be told what the boundaries and limits are that come. And it'll show up differently for everyone. In that man's case, it showed up in physical endurance and running and things like that. In your case, it may be different. बस एक काम करो खुद को खाली करो बस एक काम करो खुद को खाली करो just do one thing empty yourself empty yourself of your notions of yourself your notions of who you think you are what you think all of this is When you walk from one part of the room to the other part of the room, there's no residue left behind. Go from one thought to the other thought, there's no residue left behind. It's completely clean. And if you look at it very carefully, this body is a constant interchange of elements, isn't it? Breathing in and out, drinking in and out, eating in and out. Constant interplay, interchange of elements. Constant exchange going on here. See, the elements are all borrowed. When we die, then they'll all return to their, they'll all return to their natural state not a very long period of time. And even what we think we've achieved and accomplished, like I was uh, doing a search for who's the richest man in history. I never even heard of this man. Man lived in the 12th century. Richest man in history is someone called Musa Mullah lived in Mali in Africa, supposed to be the richest man in history. I never even heard of him. Wow. So he must have done so much and tried to become so powerful and famous and whatever. But we don't even know of him. Most of us have never heard this name, Musa Mullah. So like that, and that's just seven, eight hundred years back, not even that long back. 
So what is going to be left? There's no ground here. There's no foundation here. There's no central thing to hold on to here. And that's only bad news if you're trying really hard to hold on. Then it's very painful. It's very disorienting. It's very confusing. It's very unacceptable. But why? Why are you trying so hard to hold on? Fundamentally groundless. Life without a center. The skin cells are doing their skin cells thing. The liver cells are doing their liver cell thing. The lung cells are doing their lung cell thing. Stomach cells are doing their stomach cell thing. Brain cells are doing their brain cell thing. Tongue is doing its tongue thing. Eyes are doing its eye thing. Teeth are doing their teeth thing. Nails are doing their nail thing. Everything is just doing its own thing. And we somehow imagine there's a central person sitting here directing this machine. That's the cause of our trouble. Who are you without that belief? Without that assumption? Without that assertion? Who are you without it? Empty phenomena rolling on. Empty phenomena rolling on. Stop thinking of enlightenment as some kind of destination. See it as an ongoing recognition of this impermanence of this lack of a central organizing principle of this interconnectedness of all things an ongoing recognition of that a much better understanding of enlightenment This could be an enlightened moment. See, it's changing. My words are changing. Your thoughts are changing. Sensations, breath, sensory experience is changing. That's the first recognition. Then notice how it's changing by itself. You're not making it change. Well, if you're making it change, then you can also make it stop changing. Can you? Can you decide, okay, stop, don't change. Just mute it, just pause it, can you? So if you can't, then you have to admit that you're not, you're not really in charge over here. It's changing and it's changing by itself. And it's not always changing the direction you want it to change. You would like it to always go in the direction of pleasure and getting what you want. You behaving the way you want and others behaving the way you want. But I think everybody here can agree that that doesn't always happen. It happens for a short while, we feel, oh, I finally got it. My life's on track. I finally got it. I'm cracking it. Finally, I'm in the right place. Finally, things are lining up. Usually, it doesn't last for that long. Something comes and disrupts that again. Mm. 
That's not a problem. That's the design. It's changing, it's changing by itself. And it's not always changing in the direction that we want. We're holding on very strongly to how it should go. Create suffering. It's fundamentally groundless, no ground. Nothing there. Driverless bus. Not the fish, it's the ocean. There are these three beautiful words in the Buddhist tradition. Nirmanakaya, Sambhogakaya, Dharmakaya. Nirmanakaya is a manifest body. Sambhogakaya is the... How do you explain it? You could call it the subtle body or the reward body. And Dharmakaya is the ultimate body. So at the Nirmanakaya level, let your body and mind do their body-mind thing. This is to awaken the Buddha at the Nirmanakaya level. At the Sambhogakaya level, you realize that you are all subconscious activity, all dream activity, all astral projection, all other realms, other dimensions. So you let that subconscious activity do its thing. Don't try to interfere with it. And at the Dharmakaya level, you are one with all reality, ultimate reality. You could call it universal consciousness if you like. So the Buddha has to awaken at all three levels, Nirmanakaya, Sambhogakaya, Dharmakaya. Fundamentally groundless. No ground. No foundation. It seems like a loss. Oh, I've lost my center. I've lost my center. It seems like a loss. But it's not a loss, actually. It's like you closed your eyes and everything opened its eyes. Yes, you lost your center, but suddenly everything is the center. Hard to explain this. at home, in every place. Nirmanakaya, the destiny of this body-mind, at home, with the destiny of this body-mind. Sambhogakaya, at home, with all subconscious dream activity, other kinds of extrasensory activity intuitive activity. All the stuff that comes up at that level, at home with it. And at home with all of reality. Super conscious states. Not interfering anymore. Gone from being the fish to being the ocean.
you close your eyes, everything opens inside. For one micro moment, you close your eyes of imagining yourself to be a human being, a human personality, just for one microsecond. And everything opens its eyes. You realize your life itself. You're awake. Give yourself that gift. Enlightenment is not a destination. It is the ongoing recognition of impermanence, groundlessness. No place to stand, no need to stand. just for a few seconds, let go of your belief in free will. Countless factors, genetic factors, cultural factors, social factors, random factors are influencing everything that's happening. It took an exploding star somewhere to create the atoms and molecules in this body. That's a hint. You're not as much in charge as you imagine you are. Just for a few seconds, let go of this belief in free will. That you're somehow running the show here. Just for a few seconds, you can go back to it later if you like. Something happens. You close your close your eyes. Everything opens its eyes. From being a fish to being the ocean. So no free will means these thoughts are happening by themselves. These feelings are happening by themselves. Sensations, reactions, memories, perception. Intentions. Decisions. Actions, habits are happening by themselves.
So again and again, we touch this groundlessness. Again and again, we touch this universality. And that informs our humanity. Yes, we have to live this life and this life will involve many interactions, many decisions. And that informs this. certain steadiness, certain clarity, certain lightness, certain non-coercion, non-forcing. All that enters the activity of thoughts and actions. I like to call it the stamp of the absolute. The stamp of the absolute. And it won't always match our human ideas of how someone is supposed to be. It won't always match that but it still has the stamp of the absolute. And one more aspect of today's practice is I got this guidance that this morning we all need to bring our hearts and minds together in coherence. Coherence means all the waves are lining up. All the patterns are lining up. So without exactly knowing how it will happen, let's just make the intention that all our individual thoughts, feelings, intentions, all our individual life energies, all our individual consciousnesses, start harmonizing, synchronizing, overlapping, creating coherence. The way when you strike a bell, a very clear sound. So our collective energy has that kind of a coherence to it. And it'll be a field of uh, it'll be a field of blessings for everyone here 
and everyone across time and space. This alignment of our collective energies will create a massive field of blessings. Whatever is going on in anyone's life, it'll be like a balm, a gentle balm, healing, soothing, supporting, guiding, easing the process lightening the load. So in your own way, just incline yourself towards what is being offered here. What's it like for our individual minds to unite into a kind of vortex? into a harmonious rhythm. And it's happening right now. Creating beautiful coherence, beautiful patterns. activating a field of blessing. Healing, soothing, guiding, lightening the load. And even if this is just imagination, still, just smile. Smile from your heart. And feel into the power, the beauty, the depth of this collective consciousness. Amazing things have happened every time. Beings have come together in this kind of harmonious connection. Amazing things have happened, are happening, and will always happen. Birds flying together, fish swimming together, trees flowering together, mushrooms blooming together. ants foraging together. Tapping into a universal mind. This is what we long for. And it's happening very naturally here without any pushing and pulling.
two things happen. We don't know how they happen, they just happen. Two things happen for every single one of us. Simultaneously, the wisest version and the most innocent childlike version of ourselves comes online. Two things happen simultaneously. The wisest version and the most innocent childlike version of ourselves comes online. In perfect harmony, perfect expression, non-contradiction. You are as old as the universe and as new as a newborn child, as fresh as a newborn child. You are as old as the universe and as innocent and fresh as a newborn child. Can you accommodate that? Can you accommodate this in your being? You close your eyes, everything opens inside. You have to die to the small self to be reborn as the true self. You can't have it both ways. So just for now, die to the small self, the false self. Nirmanakaya, Sambhogakaya, Dharmakaya. Life is so conditioned, so conditioned by genetics, by experiences, by what you've seen and heard and listened to and understood. Would you allow a spark of newness, something completely beyond? Would you allow yourself to be touched by a spark of absolute newness beyond all of this.
ask and it is given. Ask to be touched by a spark of brilliance, spark of inspiration, spark of intelligence, completely beyond what you've ever conceived of, ever heard of, ever thought of in your wildest imagination. Ask and it is given, invite it, and it happens. Invite it from the center of your heart. May I be touched by a spark of inspiration, spark of brilliance, spark of the absolute beyond every possible layer of conditioning. May that be so. May that be so. May it be so. Tathastu. And you have already been touched by it. And you will be touched by it. And because it is so unconditioned, so beyond anything that you know and can conceive of, you might not even recognize it, understand it, know it. But this prayer is instantly answered, always answered. It's the rarest prayer. It's a prayer that no one knows to make. No one thought to make. And so it stands out. And so it's instantly answered, always answered. And it'll reveal itself in time. as it needs to. You are as wise and old as the universe. You are as innocent and fresh as a newborn child. You're simultaneously both without contradiction. You know how to harmonize your thoughts and energies to create alignment within yourself and with all those around you. You achieve this by not resisting, not controlling, not fighting. Not pretending to know what is best or right. 
by recognizing your fundamental groundlessness. And in this way you graduate from being alive to being life. From being alive to being life, from being a fish to being the ocean. This is not an event. There's an ongoing recognition, ongoing invitation Step over here where it's always cool. Step over here. It's always limitless, light, and free. Again, again, again. Cast away the old habits. Keep you bound. Keep you constrained. Keep you spinning in the same helpless circle. Each one of you is a powerful channel of blessings. You need to recognize that, own that. Not let any ideas about yourself or ideas others have about you ever stain this recognition. This is your inheritance and no one can take it away from you and nothing you do can take it away from you and nothing you don't do can take it away from you. Have this fundamental sense of worthiness, okayness, completeness. Let that basic fundamental sense of okayness, worthiness. Let that wholesomeness guide this life. In a way that even without having a foundation, there is a foundation. Even without having a refuge, there is a refuge. Even without having a security, there is a security.
So please be quiet for as long as you like. Whenever you feel complete, you can imagine. 